morning church would you stand with us as we prepare to worship this is your first time here we want to welcome you to multiply lake norman this is the day the lord has made are you ready to rejoice and be glad in it
delivered and God's word to them was, I will fight for you. You need only to be still. Sometimes we forget God speaks to us in a still small voice and we expect him to be as loud as the distractions that are in our head when that's not going to happen. It takes an act of spiritual discipline to be able to say in this moment of hecticness, in this crazy season, I will be still and know he is God. I will be still so he can fight for me. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us. good to be with you today welcome to church hey you may go ahead and take your seats so glad to have you here so glad that you're here with us today welcome out hey if you've been with us for the last few weeks you know that we are currently in our series called it's time and pastor zach has a great message for us today as we continue this series a couple of quick announcements as we start our morning off first of all some of you might be thinking, hey, how was that serve day that was supposed to happen yesterday? Well, that serve day has been postponed for two reasons. Number one, the weather wasn't the best yesterday, so we thought it would be in the best interest to postpone it. But secondly, we have been seeing some awesome favor and blessings from local community and local businesses. And we had a local business reach out to us and say, hey, we know that you have two large oak trees. I know you have a, a lot of stuff that wants to get done on that property. We're going to donate three hours of our time. And so they had a crew there. They did a ton of work for us. And in addition to that, they're donating 50 yards of mulch to the property coming up this coming week. And if you know, you're, you're probably clapping because you know how expensive mulch can be. So 50 yards of mulch is, is a great, great thing. And they're donating that to the church. And so, man, we've been seeing some awesome individuals and companies and businesses step up and say, hey, how can I serve? And so that, that serve day has been postponed to April the 6th. And so if you're saying, hey, I was trying to get there on Saturday, but I couldn't make it. Now this is the Lord telling you that you should be there this coming serve day, which is April 6th. So make sure you sign up. It's going to be a great time for us to continue to, to make that property look great. And just as a reminder, we have Easter coming up. We have Good Friday service at 6.30 right here in the auditorium. And then on Easter Sunday, we have 9 o'clock and 10.30. On Good Friday, we are going through the last seven sayings of Jesus on the cross. This will be a great time for us to worship together and, and look at the last seven sayings of Jesus on the cross. And so you don't want to be here for that 6.30 on Friday and then 9 o'clock and 10.30 on Easter Sunday. And then the week after Easter, April the 7th, we're going to have a baptism Sunday happening here after the 1030 service. And so if you're interested in learning more about baptism or you know you want to be baptized, go ahead and scan the QR code. Come find me after the service. 
would love to get you signed up. I'd love to talk to you about what that means and what that looks like here at Multiply Church. And church family, hey, if this is your first time here with us today, let me be one of the first to say welcome. We truly believe that, that we're a big family here. And, and our hope and prayer is that as, as you walked in from the parking lot and took your seats here today, that you already feel at home. And if you would, just go ahead and scan the QR code or there's physical copies out in the lobby. Go ahead and scan the QR code, fill a card out, or grab, grab a pen and one in the lobby. We would love just to reach out to you this week to simply to say thank you for worshiping alongside of us. So church family, can we celebrate all those that are here for the very first time with a round of applause? Man, we're so glad to have you here. So glad that you're worshiping alongside of us. And hey, as we transition to a moment where we give our tithe and offering, some of the ladies of the house had the opportunity to visit one of our strategic partners. It's called Feed and See. And it's actually right here in Mooresville, North Carolina. And they're meeting a huge need in the Lake Norman area. And so the ladies had the opportunity to serve, but not only do we have the opportunity to serve, but we also have the opportunity to partner with Feed and See on a financial level because of your generosity. And so I just wanna remind all of us today that, that giving matters, that generosity matters, that we're meeting the needs of the local community, we're meeting the needs of people all across the world because we are the church. So I just wanna say thank you for continuing to meet the needs of the local community through your generosity. And as always, there's always three ways to give. You can scan the QR code that's, that's up on the screen. You can text the word Multiply Lake Norman to the number 77977. Or during this next worship song, you can place your offering in the buckets. Let me pray for us. Lord, thank you for today. Father, thank you for the opportunity that, that we get to build your kingdom through our generosity. Father, I pray that you take our gift and, and not just make it, not just add to it, but you multiply it. So Lord, we dedicate this time to you. Continue to be with us in all that we do. It's in your name that we pray. Amen. Would you stand with us as we go back into a time of worship?
on who you are. We say thank you for, for allowing us just to gather. We say thank you for allowing your word to speak to us today. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would move throughout this service. And it's in your name we pray. And everyone said amen and amen. Well, hey, listen, turn and greet two or three people. Give them a high five. Tell them what's up. Hey, if you don't know who's around you, introduce yourself. Get to know somebody this morning. Hey, second service, how are we feeling today? Feeling good? Who, who's tired of the bipolar weather? Everyone? I'm tired of it. I don't get it. First thing I say in the morning is, Alexa, what's the temperature today? And I get 41. What the heck? No, I don't like the bipolar weather. Hey, before we, before we get started, a couple of announcements. The first one is this. Maybe you noticed out in the lobby, we have a stack of cards uh, for you to grab one, write a note to Coach Jackson and to Lisa and, and their family. Uh, a little bit of an update. So Coach Jackson is out of ICU and he's been moved across the street into kind of a live-in rehab uh, facility. So he's going through rehab now. Uh, we're writing those letters. letters. We're going to gather all of those and we're going to send them uh, to those in the next few days. So for those of you who don't know what today is, uh, today is Palm Sunday. And today is one of those days that I want you to, to take notes throughout the service. I say that every week, but, but we're going to be doing some scriptural archaeology. We're going to be diving into scripture. I'm going to give you a lot of various different scriptures today. And I want you to be able to go back on your own time and kind of read through the surrounding verses and, and surrounding chapters as, as we dive into today's message. So we've been in this series called It's Time. It's week number three of this series. And if I had to title this message something today, it would be titled this, A Decision to Cross. A Decision to Cross. We're going to take a look at the book of Joel and we're going to be in 2 Kings as well. Some of y'all are like, where in the world is Joel in the Bible? <laughs> Listen, if you go to the very front of your Bible, there's this thing called an, an index and you can kind of look at it and it'll tell you what page number it's on. So, so go ahead and kind of bookmark the book of Joel and 2 Kings. Now, the last two weeks, we've talked about two specific Hebrew words. The first one is haya. Some of y'all are locked in, like you know exactly where we're going, but, but haya, and, and haya, if you haven't been here, it's a Hebrew word for alignment. What we understand is this, God created chronological time, but he's not confined by chronological time. 
God doesn't always think the way we do when it comes to time. See, when it comes to time, we think of of seconds and and we think of minutes and days and weeks and months and years. But but God thinks of time as in alignment. The second, the air condition came on at the perfect time. It was like, boom. (laughs) The, The second word that we've learned is ata. And ata means now. So there's alignment and then there's now. There's alignment and then there's movement. We can't move to the areas that God wants us to in our life unless we are aligned with him first. So there's hayab and then there's ata. Again, I mentioned in week one that any time that we talk about uh, seasons of waiting or seasons of waiting on God, seasons of timing with God, we refer to it as moments of waiting, seasons of, of waiting. Like, okay, God, I'm waiting on God. It's the time frame that I'm waiting on God. Here's the challenge. After waiting, there has to be movement. So we've talked about this idea of forward the first six or seven weeks of the year. We said our word of the year is forward, declaring direction and destiny. Forward kind of emphasizes that we're going to move. Then we talked about this idea of it's time. Well, again, the timing of God is not always waiting. Yes, there are seasons of waiting, but then there are seasons of movement. And I think oftentimes we say something like, God, where are you? And God says, hey, I'm way over here. I've already, I've already moved. And in moments where we say, God, where are you? What if God is calling us to continue to move forward? Again, there are seasons of waiting, but then there are seasons of movement. We see waiting in John chapter 2 when Jesus says, hey, my time has not yet come. He awaits. He aligns himself with the Father. And then he moves towards three and a half years of Ministry. Every season has a defining moment. A defining moment where we eventually have to choose to stay where we are or to move forward. A a moment when you have to choose to cross from where you are to where God's calling you to be. We all we all make big decisions in our life. I remember being in high school, and at that time, the biggest decision that I could have made in my life at that moment was which college I was going to go to. Luke, you've made some big decisions over the past month or so. Like, what does it look like after graduating from Davidson? Yay, you're going to graduate. And then what does the next season of your life look like? James, you had to choose, like, I'm going to apply for medical school. Where where am I going to go? Have you made a decision yet? Not You got to make a decision. Perfect analogy. (laughs) Wasn't planning on that. But we all have to make these big decisions. Maybe a decision that, that was big for you in your life is, is if you were going to get married or not. And I remember when Jenna and I were talking about it, and then that turned into, well, well what house are we going to buy? Are we going to rent? Are, are we going to buy? How many of y'all had to make a housing decision in the last three years? Yeah, a lot of you, a lot of us. I'm involved. B- big decisions. And then Jenna, we're in our marriage, it's like, well, well, man, are we gonna are we gonna have kids now, or are we going to wait? And, and then you, it's like, man, will we have one? Do we have a second one? We did really good with the first one so far. Do we want to like mess up the second one, or do we, do we take another chance? And then you have two. It's like, man, do I do I have three? And and it's all of these decisions in life. We talk about other decisions that that we're going to make. The reality of it is, life is full of making decisions. Now we say it like this here at Multiply Church. All of those other decisions are important. What house to buy, what job to take, what person to marry. All of those decisions are important. But the most important decision you could ever make in your entire life is to choose to follow Jesus. It's the most important decision you could ever, everything else is secondary to that one decision. What does it look like to follow Jesus? And I mean, I mean radically following Jesus. I'm not talking about the cute little wrist tattoo with the Bible verse. I like tattoos. I have them. Okay, I'm not picking on tattoos. But I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the cute little Hobby Lobby picture frame that you bought and you hung it in, in your house. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Come on, preach it. That's what I'm talking about. Make that an Instagram clip. Now we can, we, 
can buy those picture frames as for me. Y'all are raising that kid right. That's what I'm talking about. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, now let me press into that for a minute. And we just clap. So y'all, y'all better clap at this next one too. All right. Wasn't trying to tee you up, but I did. See, we can have that hanging in our house, but when we walk into your house, do we hear laughter and joy or do we hear bickering and criticism? We can say, as for me and my house, we will, we will serve the Lord. Well, well what, does, what does the night look like? Are you yelling at your kids, telling them to get in bed right now because you said so? Or are you putting them to bed and praying over them and, and reading them scripture? What, is, what does it look like for me and my house to serve the Lord? Well, again, we can, have, we can have the tattoo. Y'all keep, y'all, y'all fire me up. Let's, y'all fire me up today. But we can, talk about, we can talk about the little tattoos that we have. I had a conversation. I had a conversation about why I have this sleeve that I have, like why I have the tattoo that I have. It's an opportunity to talk about Jesus. Well, well am I actually taking that opportunity or am I just wearing it because it, or do I just have it because it looks good? Like what, what are we really doing? Are we radically following Jesus or not? Are we radically creating habits or not? Are we radically making decisions or not? Are we radically putting into action this idea that we will serve the Lord? Now hear me, that does not mean perfection. It doesn't mean perfection. Newsflash, none of us in this room will ever be perfect. We'll never be perfect. But it's about realizing and recognizing that when we sin, when we fail, when we make mistakes, that we're running back to the feet of Jesus, not making excuses for what we've done. I want to be a person that says before everyone, listen, I'm, a, I'm Zach and, and listen, I've got sin in my life. Just because I have the title of pastor does not mean I'm perfect. Just because I wear a microphone on Sunday morning does not mean I'm perfect, nor am I going to act like I am. I'm a fallen, broken human being. But look, I'm not going to make excuses for it. I'm going to say, you know what? I'm going to run to the feet of Jesus. I want to radically follow Jesus. I told y'all about Coach Jackson. Again, many of y'all have been praying for him. You've reached out to him. You've seen the social media posts. For those who don't know, he was in a a severe uh, car accident. And man, we've been, we've been praying for him. We've been lifting him up in prayer and we've been supporting his family. But, but I had an opportunity to go sit in, a, sit in the hospital room with him. And I'll be honest with you, it, it shook me. It really did. Because I'm seeing this man that, that I admire and, and I'm watching him as I walk into a room praying over two doctors who are caring for him. By the way, the day before he got out of surgery where he had his jaw fixed and it was wired shut, so it, it's not, it doesn't feel good. And he's choosing to pray for him and he's, and he's talking like this and, and I could just kind of hear the pain, but he's choosing to pray anyway. And then they left and he said, Zach, by all accounts, I shouldn't be here. He said, I, I, I'm going to make sure that for the rest of my life, I tell people about Jesus. I don't care if I have to start a podcast. I don't care if I have to write a book. I don't care if I'm just talking to random people that I pass. And he made these two statements that I, will, I think I will always remember. And he said this. He says, who cares if people think that I'm weird? Who, who cares? Who cares if people get offended? Who Who cares? Who cares? Listen, if we believe that we have the greatest story, the greatest message ever told, that there was this guy named Jesus that was born, lived a perfect life, life, hung on the cross for my sins, and forgave me so that I would not spend eternity in hell. If we believe that story, then why aren't we sharing more of it? Why, Why aren't we? So we have to make these decisions. See, Scripture tells us that every knee will bow and and every tongue will confess that Jesus is Lord. And we see it in the book of Joel and it kind of foreshadows these events. So the first Scripture I want you to write down today is this. Joel chapter 3, verse 2. It says, I will gather all nations and bring them down to the valley of Jehoshaphat. In that place, there will be judgment for the sins of the world. So today I told you we're going to do some scriptural archaeology. The Valley of Jehoshaphat is also known as the Kidron Valley. So I want you to write that down, the Kidron Valley, K-I-D-R-O-N. And we see that the Kidron Valley is a physical location throughout Scripture. 
Now, the physical location is this. We know that the Kidron Valley has the Mount of Olives on one side and it has Jerusalem on the other. That's its physical location. Again, we see this reference throughout scripture. One of the places that we see it is 2 Kings chapter 23. Let me give us some historical context. To this point in 2 Kings chapter 23, the, the kingdom has been split into two. So you have Israel and you have Judah. And there's rulers and kings over Israel and there's rulers and kings over Judah. So this is well after King David. This is, this is well after Solomon. And in fact, 2 Kings chapter 23 is 16 rulers after Solomon. And, and up until this point, the track record of these 16 rulers of Judah were hit or miss. And let me kind of read what the Bible says about a few of them. So after Solomon, we have uh, Rehoboam and Abijah. And, and what the Bible says is this, that they committed sins in the eyes of the Lord. And then King Asa and Jehoshaphat kind of turn it around. The Bible says that they did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. And there were two more bad ones. And then there were three random leaders. And, and then we fast forward a little bit. We get to Uzziah and Jotham. And, and the Bible says that they did well in the eyes of the Lord. And then Ahaz, the Bible says this. He did not do what was right in the eyes of the Lord. They, they were known by how they followed the Lord or not. And then we get to Hezekiah. The Bible says that Hezekiah did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Now the next two are interesting to me. So after Hezekiah, we have Manasseh. And you can go back and you can read through all of these rulers later. But, but the Bible says this about Manasseh. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. Manasseh, what's up? The Lord just took care of it. He, he just took care of culture. He just took care of society and he pushed it out. And what Manasseh did was said, no, no, no. I don't want what God has for me. I want what culture and society have for me. I, I don't know if that rings true today at all. More focused on culture and society opposed to the word of God. More focused on a, a fear of being canceled opposed to, to following the word of God. More focused on having friends and culture and society and, and Facebook groups and making sure they like me opposed to following the word of God. And then, and then we get to Amon. Amon, he forsook the Lord, the God of his ancestors, and did not walk in obedience with him. Choosing not to follow the words of God. We finally get to Josiah in 2 Kings chapter 23, picking up in verse 1, and it reads like this. The king called together all the elders of Judah and Jerusalem. He went up to the temple of the Lord with the people of Judah, the inhabitants of Jerusalem, the priests and the prophets, all the people from the least to the greatest. Took everybody. He read in there hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of the Lord. I want you to remember that phrase. They were found in the temple of the Lord. The king stood by the pillar and renewed the covenant in the presence of the Lord to follow the Lord and, and keep his commands, statutes, and decrees with all of his heart and all of his soul, thus confirming the words of the covenant written in this book. And this book. Not the words and the covenants of culture and society, but of, of this book. Then all the people pledged themselves to this covenant. And the king ordered Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest next in rank, and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made from Baal and Asherah and the starry host. He burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the where? The Kidron Valley. And took the ashes to Bethel. So to this point, what we understand is King Josiah really had a 50-50 shot of being good or being bad. He, he had a 50-50 shot of, of following the words and the decrees of God or not. Now, if we back up one chapter, what, what do we find? We find that the book of the law was found and we see that. I just read it. I told you to remember it. 2 Kings 23 verse 2 he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant, which had been found in the temple of 
the Lord. Well, to understand the book of the covenant, we have to go back to Deuteronomy chapter 5 and 6. And what do we see there? We see the Ten Commandments. Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 17 reads like this. You must diligently obey the commands of the Lord your God. All the laws and decrees he has given you. Do what is right and good in the Lord's sight. So all will be well with you. What did we read about the leaders of Judah? Some of them did what was right in the eyes of the Lord. Some of them did what was wrong in the eyes of the Lord. Some followed the decrees and the laws that we see in Deuteronomy. Some didn't. We all have a decision to make. Are we going to follow the word of God or are we not? Again, that does not mean perfection. It means like Josiah, when you realize and recognize that that you're not following it, what do you do? You declare the word of God and then you start to follow it. That's what this means. Y'all remember what the Bible said about Manasseh? He did evil in the eyes of the Lord following the practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He was more focused on culture and society than he was on following God. What did he do? He hid the decrees of God in the temple. They were found. They were found one chapter earlier in chapter 2 Kings 22. Many theologians would suggest that Manasseh hid them in the temple. But theologian John Benson wrote this. It would have been no defense to argue that the book had, been, had not been obeyed because it had been lost. The book had become lost in the first place because it had ceased to be important. Listen, some, some of us have this thing in our house, sitting on a shelf, sitting on the nightstand, acting as if osmosis is a real thing. <laughs> acting as if like all I got to do is like, as long as I'm near it, it's going to leak out. As long as, long as I'm near it, I'm going to get it. It doesn't matter if they, this thing is in your house or not. If it's not important, If it's not important, we said at the beginning of the year, there's four things that we're going to focus on this year. We're going to read the word. We're going to memorize the word. We're going to speak the word. And we're going to live the word. This This thing is important. We have a decision to make. Either we're going to choose to follow it or we're not. That statement that Benson said, it actually shakes me to my core. See, see, King Josiah had every every right so to speak to say hey god it wasn't it, it wasn't something i knew because my dad never taught me or or it wasn't in my household growing up or or that's not the way that i was taught or and then cast the blame on whatever he wanted to but he didn't make an excuse the the bible says that he took the decree seriously What I know is this, your past decisions don't define your future outcome. Your current decisions do. It's not just the past decisions in your life. It's it's what you currently decide. See, some of us, we like halfway follow Jesus, half in, half out. And what we like to do is kind of self-sabotage ourselves by blaming it on the past, good and bad. Let me show you this. So good, we'll say something like, well, I can, never, I can never follow Jesus like that person because I've got X, Y, and Z in my past. And I'm just, man, you know, two years ago, last year, six months ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago, I really messed up. I can't, I can't follow Jesus like they can because of that moment in my life. As if grace and forgiveness aren't enough for your past sins. But then the inverse is also true. We feel like we can't follow Jesus in the future because we look back in our life and we go, man, that season I was on fire for God. Before I had kids, I was getting up every morning and I was was reading scripture. I was praying. At night, I would would just have that one-on-one time with Jesus and I would pray every single night. And and then I had kids and we we look back as if like, man, I was more spiritual back then. And and I'm just nowhere close to that now. And and we self-sabotage ourselves thinking that because of our past, good or bad, we can't follow Jesus like he's calling us to in the future. It's not your past decisions that, that matter. It's your current ones. 
Those are real decisions you make. I get it. But stop living as if that's the only choice that you have. Good or bad, follow Jesus today. Talk about Jesus today. Take this thing serious today. What did King Josiah do? He gives us some direction in 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 2. The first thing that he did, he made a decision to return to the house of God. 2 Kings chapter 23, verse 2 says this. He went up to the house of the Lord. He didn't, he didn't make an excuse for his past, good or bad. He just went to the house of the Lord. Y'all, can I tell you that Sunday morning is important? It's not so that you can check your box. It's not so that you can get like that gold star in heaven. Y'all, community matters. What I love about our church, I love it, is that in the lobby, I see people watching others come in and it's like their face lights up because their friend just walked in the door. And, and they get to check in. And, and what I know, what I love is when I hear things like, hey, what are we doing for, what are we doing for dinner this week? What are, hey, what kind of food are we going to have at, at Bible study? Hey, what, what pager are we going to read in Bible study? Like, hey, where are, we, where are we going to hang out? Like, it's just those natural, real, organic conversations. Listen, we have, I hear shameless plug. We have all types of groups here. We have groups that meet Monday through Sunday. I mean, literally every day of the week, a group is meeting. Don't, don't make an excuse on like, I didn't find any community in the church. Y'all ever gone to a group before? Don't tell me you didn't find community in the church if you didn't go to a group. Don't tell me you didn't find community in the church if you didn't follow up with that text when, when somebody sent it to you. Don't tell me you didn't find community in the church when you got that email and you decided to go ahead and throw it in the trash. Don't, don't tell me that you didn't find community in the church when, when I invited you over to my house and you didn't show up. Like it's this, it's this give and take. It's this flow. But, but coming to the house of the Lord matters. It, it makes us better. The second thing that Josiah did, he made a decision to return to the word of God. The second part of verse two says this, he read in their hearing all the words of the book of the covenant. I can promise y'all one thing coming to this church. I'm gonna preach out of this thing. This This is the main source. It's the only source. Everything else is just supplemental. If I talk about a cool story, it's supplemental. If I read a book, it's supplemental. If we listen to music, it's supplemental. If I quote Eminem again, it's supplemental. <laughs> or Prince. Or Jason Aldean. Or... It's all supplemental. It's, 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 to get, it's to get us to kind of connect to the point. But the main point is always the main point. The main point is this thing right here. That's it. And, and the next thing that we see is he made a decision to be all in heart and soul. 2 Kings 23.3 And the king stood by a pillar made a covenant before the Lord to walk after the Lord and to keep his commandments and his testimonies and his statutes with all of their heart and all of their soul to perform the words of this covenant that were written in the book and all the people stood to the covenant and I mentioned I mentioned earlier I mentioned the Kidron Valley you've heard me mention it a couple of times you heard me read it but what happened, he burned them. He, he, he took up everything that was opposed to God. I'll just read it. The king ordered Hilkiah, the high priest, the priest next to in, in rank, and the doorkeepers to remove from the temple of the Lord all the articles made from Baal and Asherah and all the starry hosts. And he burned them outside Jerusalem in the fields of the Kidron Valley and, and took the ashes to Bethel. So everything that opposed God, everything that was in the way of, of following God, it was removed and burned in the Kidron Valley. Now, there's another name for the Kidron Valley, and it's called the Valley of Decisions. Can I tell y'all that we're all walking through the Valley of Decisions? We're all gonna be like King Josiah. We can either choose to follow culture and society, or we can choose to remove it, to burn it, and follow God. I mean, that's that's kind of where we are. There's... 
There's no other option. There's no other option. Today, there's a, a decision to cross, a decision to follow Jesus with all of your heart and all of your soul, not by a, a tattoo Bible verse or something that you bought from Hobby Lobby or the post that you share on social media. It's about radically following Jesus. So Josiah returned to the house of the Lord. He, he returned to the word of God and he was in heart and soul. This week, I'll be honest with you, there was so much content that I had, like just studying and researching and reading. I've got like two or three pages, like cut material that I just didn't get to because it was just, it was so much. And talking about Kings, I could go over to first and second Chronicles because they kind of mirror each other as they go through scripture. And, and there's just so much. And so I wanted to challenge you to, to write it down, to follow up later and to begin to read about some of those Kings and how they follow that. There's so, so much there. And Friday I was, I was struggling and I was like, God, what, like, what do you want me to get across? Like, it's, it's your words, it's your scripture, this is your message. What, what do you want? Like, where, where's that aha moment? Where's like the, the yeah, but how moment? How do I implement this into my life? Started just typing some stuff out, started journaling some stuff. It was just so much going through my head, so much so that I called Pastor Manny and I was like, Manny, you got to read this to make sure I'm like, I'm flowing because it makes sense to me. Like, make sure it makes sense to you because if it doesn't make sense to you, it's not gonna make sense to anybody else. But these were the, these were the three kind of statements that I felt like the Lord gave me for, for our church. The first one is this. We have a decision to complain or a decision to pray. We have a decision to repeat the past or release the past. And we have a decision to run from God or to run to God. Now, now by ourselves, making that right decision is absolutely impossible. The first thing that I said today was today is Palm Sunday. So what's the significance of that? How, how does the book of Joel tie into Palm Sunday? How does second Kings tie into Palm Sunday? In all four gospels, in Matthew and Mark and Luke and John, we read of this Palm Sunday account or this triumphal entry account. And, and so I begin to ask myself some questions. Well, well if it's a triumphal entry, where, where was Jesus coming from? He was coming from the Mount of Olives. Where was Jesus going? Well, he was, he was going to Jerusalem. What was in between? What did he have to cross from the Mount of Olives to Jerusalem? He had to cross the Kidron Valley. So, so why is that significant? God will never ask us to make decisions that he hasn't already made. See, see, Jesus showed us that, that Jesus showed us the right decision was to pray. Jesus showed us that the right decision was to release the past. Jesus showed us that the right decision was to, to run after God. If I could encourage you with anything today, could I encourage you to drop the worry, to drop the anxiety, to, to drop the doubt? What did, what did King Josiah do? He went to the house of the Lord and declared the word of God. Listen, if it was, if it was good enough for King Josiah, who the Bible says that he was made right in the eyes of God, he followed after God, then it, it's probably good for us too. Think back to our forward series. We talked about words, words forming worlds, words forming our identity in the book of Genesis. God said, and it was, he spoke and things were created. I'm tired of people speaking neg negativity, one over their lives and two over my life. I'm tired of my own thoughts being negative thoughts. I, I want to declare truth. I want to declare the word of God. And so we're going to put it into practice. I'm going to ask everyone to stand. And look, it might feel weird to some of y'all, and that's okay, but we're going to stretch our faith a little bit. What does it look like to declare the word of God? There's gonna be some Bible verses that we're gonna put on the screen and we're gonna declare them together. Now listen, again, the Bible says that everyone's gonna give an account before the Lord. So you get to give your own account, I get to give my own account. Now when I say these scriptures, I'm gonna say it with my chest. 
I was screaming at the, at the TV last night watching State play. I was, some of y'all were screaming for Duke. Some of y'all were screaming for UNC. Some of y'all were screaming for your team. Listen, some of y'all get, y'all get zealous and hype for things that you want to get zealous and hype for. Well, well, I'm going to make some declarations. You can make whatever declaration you want and say it however you want. But, but I want to read Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. And let's read it together. It says this, For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand firm, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. Let's declare 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 16. It says, live as people who are free, not using your freedom to cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Y'all, my voice is going away, so I need y'all to help me out with this. Isaiah chapter 61, verse 1 reads like this. The Spirit of the Sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom for the captives and release from darkness for the prisoners. Psalm chapter 118, verse 5. Some of y'all need to say it with your chest. Out of my distress, I called on the Lord and the Lord answered me and set me free. The last one that we're going to read, John chapter 8, verse 32 says this, and you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Church, let's go back and worship as we declare the word of God. I Church, just as the kings that Pastor Zach mentioned in the beginning of this sermon were known for if they followed God or didn't follow God, the question then becomes, what will we be known for? And he talked about this word decision. And if you look at the word decide, the suffix of the word is C-I-D-E. And it means to kill off. So if you look at homicide or pesticide or germicide, it's saying doing away with or killing off. And so what I'm saying today is that there's a decision that we need to make to kill off any fear, any worry, any doubt or any anxiety and truly leave it at the feet of Jesus. The question was posed to us, are we going to pray? Are we going to, re to relive the past or relieve the past of where it was and to decide to follow Jesus? Because can I encourage us today that the, the single most important decision that we could ever make is to decide to follow Jesus. Is to do away with any other option. 
And so I don't know if you're here today believing or needing a, a, a decision to be made to do away with your past to do away with any decisions that's been holding you back from a true relationship with Jesus. Or maybe you're here today and you've never accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Can I commit to you today that that is a decision that you shouldn't put off any longer? Maybe you've been waiting for someone to say, hey, Jesus is the way. I'm telling you, Jesus is the way. And you can make that decision today. So as we close our eyes and bow our heads and and I invite you to this decision. Maybe you're here and you say, I've walked away from my relationship with Christ. Maybe you're here today and you said, I've never fully put my faith in Jesus and accepted him as, as Lord and Savior. But you're making that decision. You're deciding today to, to do away with every other option and say, I'm coming to the feet of Jesus and laying my life down and sacrificing it all because I know that you have good plans for me that I can build my life on that foundation. If that's you today, would you boldly raise your hand so we can pray with you and pray for you? Amen. Amen. And church, can we pray this prayer out loud together? For the benefit of those that maybe are praying this for the very first time or maybe committing their lives back to you to, to jesus say jesus thank you for my life thank you for coming to this earth to die on a cross for me lord cleanse me make me whole from this day forward i decide i'm making the decision to no longer let the past affect my future I'm choosing to live for you. I declare that you are Lord, that you have saved me. And thank you, Jesus, for all that you're going to do in my life. Help me to live wide awake to your love and fully alive to my purpose. And it's in Christ's name that we pray. And all God's people said, amen and amen church can we celebrate those that raised their hands today can we celebrate what the lord is doing in and through our lives amen and amen well church remember we're not going to be meeting here just next sunday but we have good friday coming up and we'll be going through the seven last sayings of jesus on the cross so as we continue to love jesus and change the world we'll see you back here on Friday, 6.30, then again on Sunday at 9 o'clock and 10.30 as we continue to love Jesus and change the world. God bless you. Have a great rest of your Sunday. We'll see you this Friday.